We're going to show you how to stain and glaze wood today on Jones Nose. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. What is that? Around the country, little buggy there. Welcome to my channel, I'm the Flooring and Stair Contractor, and today we're out at one of our projects. We are working on a custom staircase, some vinyl floors, some stair railing, and a lot more. Um, we just did a video on how to make some custom treads. Be sure to check it out, and today we're going to show you how to stain and finish these treads. We also have tons of shorts from this video. So, without any further ado, let's hit it. So here is the vinyl floor. This is what we installed in all the bedrooms and then the upstairs of the house and here are our treads this is what we're matching to it it's been a challenge now I, I can be obsessive sometimes when it comes to getting stain colors right uh, it is really tough when you're matching a product like vinyl to a wood because the vinyl or the laminate the artificial that you're matching to is just a photograph in essence and of course then we have a natural real wood product that no two pieces are going to look alike so with the vinyl you know you have repeating patterns and everything is pretty consistent or as consistent as the manufacturer wants it to be so i spent probably three to four days this week obsessing over the color and i do obsess lose sleep literally over trying to make these floors look just like the stairs so we're working with white oak and we have a custom tread that we made be sure to check out the video. We have a video on how we made these treads. I'll put the link in the description. We also have product links for everything that we're using in these videos in the description as well. So be sure to check them out. We appreciate you clicking on those links. Helps us make these videos. First thing we want to do is figure out what grade of sandpaper you want to work with. You can adjust the color of your stain just by working with different grits of sandpaper. The higher the grit, 220, the less the stain is going to penetrate because the pores on the wood are actually going to be closed you're actually going to seal them so if you want to go with something really light a lot of times you can go with a higher grit sandpaper but if you want the color you're working with to really absorb into the into the wood um, i like working with 100 120 even you can experiment and try different grits to get different colors in our case here believe it or not we went with the 100 grit i know a lot of people are going to say you can't do 100 it's not going to feel smooth but we can take care of the smoothness in the finishing stages by sanding in between our coats of finish we can make this feel as smooth as we want it so 100 grit is what worked best for our color here's what we did we went with our base coat and that was our base coat of stain we applied it we let it dry then we went with a coat of finish not too heavy but not too light somewhere in the middle what we're working with is old masters satin also comes with a hardening agent that you can add to it and the hardening agent actually doesn't set for a few days so if you pour a bunch in a cup that you're working from you add the hardener you actually got a couple days to work with it if you don't use all the the finish in one day so i'm working with the old masters satin armor finish armor because it's strong like armor uh, especially when you add the hardener to it and once our stain is dried and we've put the finish on, that's step number two, the finish. Then we did step number three where we applied our glaze. Now applying the glaze is where we had one of the biggest challenges this week to get it to go just right. A lot of times it wasn't sticking right. Too much of it was pulling off. It was sticking to all the wrong areas. It was looking hazy. It was, it was changing the color of the wood but not hitting the grain. So we came up with a technique that, that really, really came out amazing in my opinion once we applied our generous layer of glaze and then we let it sit for 10 minutes 10 minutes after 10 minutes we then took a spackle knife and forced it into all the grain we literally went back and forth removed a lot of the excess then we buffed it off with a rag and then we're not done yet then we took a 220 grit sanding block and buffed off all the haze that was left after we used the rag and what we're left with is just the glaze in the grain not on the board itself we're not done yet though from there we put a coat of finish and this is the finish where we started adding the hardener to it here's the product right here this is their hardener it's pretty cool it works really good 
It's pretty simple to use. Once we applied our coat of finish, now we're going to let it dry and then apply your final coat. So that's three coats of finish, one coat of stain, and a coat of glaze. And I think the result is pretty spectacular. I know my client's really happy and I'll be able to sleep tonight. Wow, did you get all that? It's a complicated process, but I think in the end, the results are well worth it. If you're new around here, be sure to check out all of our other content. We have lots of great videos on stairs, vinyl floors, laminate floors, and much, much more. Actually, I even have some videos of my Bernadoodle puppy. She's amazing. But please, like, share, tell your friends and family. And of course, if you already haven't, take out your favorite floor and mount and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. Thanks for watching.